Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ruben, and, and I am a software engineer at American Express. And today I am going to talk about the micro front end revolution uh, that took place at American Express. So first of all, let's uh, start with a story. Um, let's imagine that you are just uh, being hired as a new CTO for this very, very large corporation. So you are responsible for the digital transformation of, of the company as well as um, fixing issues with scaling. And, and you're in charge of uh, fixing these issues. So the first decision that you make is, right, so we need uh, more developers. We need um, to add more people, and that's what you do. So um, you also are very uh, fan of the two pizza rule, and you think, right, we need to create smaller teams and add those developers to those teams. So we create smaller autonomous teams, and because in the past uh, you were part of a, this previous company and you had some previous experience, you think, oh, I think we should do a microservices architecture here. It's a good idea. It's been proven. Uh, there are a lot of resources out there, and it's widely adopted. So let's make the most of the microservice architecture and let's make the most of horizontal scaling because we know that um, vertical scaling it, it is not uh, enough at some point. So we want to start doing horizontal scaling. And that is great. That is working very well until, well, until we try to apply these methods to the front end. And what happens with the front end? Well, the front end, let's imagine this front end is a really large monolithic application. Uh, it has a lot of legacy code. Uh, all the engineers are working on the same code base. And if we want to add more engineers, um, obviously this is a bad idea because they are working on the same code base. Uh, so the more engineers you add, the worse it becomes because it will be just a nightmare to manage uh, so many people working out of the same code base. So the front end has a lot of challenges. Um, and these challenges are communication issues, friction. Um, it, take, it takes longer and longer to add new features. Fixing and finding bugs becomes a challenge. Um, very hard to keep production and development environments in sync. And at some point in our careers, we all have had this question. We all were like, hmm, what about a complete rewrite? And you think, oh, is that even possible? It seems like a very, very difficult task. It seems like an impossible task, but you're considering, right, we need to do a complete rewrite. Now, but hold on a second. Um, I think we have seen these problems before. We have seen all these communication issues, uh, all this stuff, we, we had this when we were adopting microservices. So we think, hmm, what do we need to do to apply the microservices to the front end to solve these issues? So the first thing you try is, well, I have seen this quote somewhere. Um, independent delivery could be a really uh, a turning point for large organizations to um, allow their teams to deliver faster and freely and to collaborate more effectively. And you think, oh, that's it. I need to allow them to deploy independently. I want to allow them to deliver independently so they don't work on the same code base and they can deliver independently. And that's our first approach. And we uh, try to divide the front end. And let's say that we are going to divide it into subdomains. So we give uh, every single team a subdomain, and they're going to build their, app, their application on that subdomain, and everyone should be happy with that, and we will solve a lot of issues. Mm, well, actually, having that just independent delivery could actually cause more problems and more challenges than actual um, solutions. And let me expand on that why this will cause more challenges. Well, if we give people their own subdomain or their own place on the website, teams will tend to start building applications in silos. And what is a silo? Well, it's a way of building software that is very difficult to communicate with uh, another piece of software. So the application and the features are built in silos uh, and we start seeing uh, people there doing their own thing. Now, that also causes um, fragmented user experiences. 
because they are using their own tools and they are just uh, following their own thing and they just don't care about communicating with other teams, we end up with a very disjointed uh, user experience where uh, the website might look very different if you go to one subdomain or uh, you go, if you go to a different subdomain of the website, when you're transferring, you hold on a minute, the website doesn't look the same and it starts looking very different. Now, if we start also building um, the same functionality over and over, for example, if we want to build uh, a different variation or if you want to translate that page to a different language or launch a different uh, market in a different place, um, we end up building the same functionality again and again, just because it has some variations in language or um, different regulation in different parts of the, of the planet. So um, we start building the same thing over and over again. There is no reuse. Um, also, it becomes really difficult to upgrade and manage. Uh, things are everywhere and it's very difficult to have somewhere to update somewhere, something in one place that will propagate through, throughout the website. Uh, this one is really annoying to me when uh, you have authentication issues and you are on a website and it's asking you to log in again, but hold on, I just logged in on this part of the website and it's asking me to log in again. So we end up with a lot of authentication issues and persistent authentication. Now, this is the big question, and this is a big question on uh, this presentation. How do we scale a web application to be developed, not just by hundreds, but by thousands of engineers and upgrade it to use the latest technologies? And it's a very loaded question, and this is what we want to try and solve. This is why we want to achieve. So let me just tell you, um, just drum roll, what is the solution? Well, this is one solution, applying micro frontends. A micro frontends is just a way to apply the microservices architecture pattern to the frontend. And it's a set of tools that will allow us to do that and fix all those challenges and problems that we are facing. So how do we, we do it? A bit of history. Um, American Express is actually a pioneer in the implementation of uh, micro frontends. And since 2016, uh, we have implemented this framework that allows us to create server-side render micro frontends and compose them on the page. So this framework solves a lot of these problems. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how this framework and how the concept behind the, the framework has helped American Express solve the scaling issues. So let's have a look. First of all, what uh, we have solved and what features have uh, helped us solve some of the problems. Okay, let's start by uh, the modular design by uh, default. Um, what do I mean by modular design? Well, we are building instead of entire uh, pages or entire application applications, we are building modules. And these modules allow us to uh, deploy them independently, but also we can give parts of the website, not just a subdomain, just very granular parts of the website to independent teams. An example of this will be, uh, there is a team that handles the header and the footer and the overall navigation. That overall navigation, the team will be in charge of making sure that it's translated to all languages. They will make sure that it has the latest uh, uh, version, latest colors, latest links and everything. And, and also we probably have another team handling the authentication. If I'm one of the teams developing a page, I know that I don't have to worry about the header or the footer or the newest uh, links that have to be added because I can just drag and drop that module onto my page and then just get on with my development. The same with authentication authorization. I don't have to worry about implementing authentication many times because there, I know there is a module that allows you to do authentication. This also uh, provides server-side rendering and this um, application allows us to do not just client-side um, interactive experiences, but also servers are render um, our applications, uh, which is important for SEO as we know. It also provides us with enterprise security. Um, it's very important that you manage that from a centralized place and make sure that everyone is compliant with security, uh, implementing things like the uh, content security policy, which is an industry standard, just ensuring that every single module uh, 
provides the, the security required. And if you remember before, I mentioned, I mentioned when you um, try to do uh, different markets or internationalization, uh, the app provides the option to uh, translate those modules uh, and just reuse them in different contexts. The main feature of all, well, is uh, as we discussed before, is allowing independent deployments. Every single team we have will have uh, their own uh, capability to deploy to production without having to deploy the entire uh, website, entire application. And the most important of all, there is no server restart. So you can deploy independently. You don't have to restart any servers when you deploy. The server will just carry on running. And this is probably when you start asking, okay, show me the, show me the architecture, show me the code, show me what is uh, behind the scenes of this framework. Okay, so we are going to see the technology behind this. Um, and the, the technology is basically we have a, a Node.js server uh, in the background that is just a long running server. That server provides the servers are rendering. It provides the composition of different modules. And on the right hand side, we have uh, the Holocron modules, which are basically micro front ends built on top of React. Uh, and yes, that, that's a Star Wars reference. We, we like Star Wars and uh, Holocron modules is the name that we've given to uh, the, the, the modules and the micro front ends. Uh, and these modules uh, are in charge of the business logic, are, are in charge of the user experience. So there is no business logic or nothing is built on the Node.js server. The Node.js server is just the orchestrator. It's just uh, the container that is in charge of the server side rendering and the composition. But all the logic and all the um, applications are built as independent Holocron modules. And we are using React uh, to allow this um, composition model. Now let's uh, take a look at the diagram and what happens when um, we are in production. So in production, we have, again, the, the Node.js server is the long running process. And we have our Holocron modules deployed to a CDN. Those uh, modules on the CDN um, are deployed and they have the static assets, the, uh, the server uh, code, as well as the client code. And the way that we know what modules are deployed to the particular application that we're working on is by using something that we call the module map. The module map is just a um, JSON file that is very similar. You can think about the module map to something like the uh, package.json file, where we have a reference, a list of modules and their versions, and what modules should be active on this application. So what the one app server does is we'll keep checking this JSON file regularly for changes, and it will find out if a module has been updated, if it has been removed, or it has been uh, added. And those modules are added into memory those modules in memory are ready to be rendered and to take requests. So after the modules are loaded into memory, when the user types um, the, the URL, the request will come to the one app server, and then we will have um, the modules composed on the page. So if you look at the diagram below, we have um, the, the root module, which is uh, basically the module where we configure the application, and we contain the other modules. And then we have individual modules on the same page. You could also load different modules on different URLs and compose them. Uh, this is up to the developer and up to the requirements how to compose those modules on the page. Right, so this is more or less what happens in uh, the production now. We, most of us are developers. Let's see, how do you manage this in development? Because the first question that we might have is, right, we have, let's say 300 modules in production. How am I meant to use all this code? How am I meant to download all this code and make a change? Well, every single module has their own repository. They have their own CICD pipeline and they are, they have their isolated so they have their own code base. So the way we do this is we have a um, local de development environment that will pull the one app server um, from a Docker image 
Uh, we also have a, a CDN locally. So what happens is if I want to make a change to one of the modules, I just clone the repository into my local machine, make the change, and the one app server locally from Docker will just basically load all the rest of the modules that are in production, and it will compose them for my application. So I don't have to download all the code. I can just download the module that I want to change, compose it locally, test it, and then it will be ready for deployment. So this is what happens um, in uh, development uh, is a very easy way just to manage uh, separate code bases. And again, the CI/CD pipeline and everything is individually for every single module. So after I have made the changes to my module, I will do in independent unit tests. I will also perform some um, integration tests to make sure that the module behaves as expected when running in the environment with the other modules. And then I will push it. After I push it to production, the um, CI-CD pipeline will publish it to the uh, production CDN, and then the production one app server will pull that module from the module map and a new version will be installed. Everything happens at runtime. The one app server does not need to restart when a new module is added into memory. It will just find a new, a new module, put it into memory, and then you have something in production. So this is very powerful because it means that you don't have to worry about uh, deploying things and restarting servers and downtime because the server is all, always running and modules can be just added and removed at runtime. Okay, so this is just a conclusion. And the conclusion is, well, this is great. This has worked very well for us. Micro frontends has been um, an architecture that has solved a lot of problems with scaling, making sure that we can have thousands of developers working on the same application without having um, a lot of problems um, with single code bases and a lot, a lot of problems with um, deployments. But the conclusion is uh, there isn't a single approach. There is there isn't a single solution for this problem. Uh, micro front ends are a pattern. They are not a set of tools or a framework that you can just plug and play. Um, it depends on your use case and your specific use case will likely drive the requirements and the architecture that you need to use to solve the scaling problems. So different companies will have different issues and you will have different things that you can solve. So just to conclude, um, the, the OneApp um, framework is, is open source if you want to take a look at it uh, and just let us know what you think. So yeah, thank you very much. And I hope that you enjoy your presentation. Now I just um, hope that you have some questions. <laughs>